Now that you have a good understanding of the catalog system, let's talk about some advanced topics. How do you create and build a product bundle with the catalog system? This can be achieved using catalog relationships, and in our demo, we'll take a look at how we can do this. We will also go over how to integrate SharePoint with Commerce Server. In our demo, we'll create a web part and access the Commerce Server catalog data. We will also talk about catalog workflow. A scenario might be is that when new products are created, they must be approved by a manager. So you perform some spell check and you add and modify some properties and when it's ready, you want to send this to your manager so it can be approved. Once the product is approved, it can then be staged and this workflow and how do you integrate this to the catalog system. We will also go over how to extend the catalog system. For example, the catalog web services. It can be extended by inheriting the catalog web service and overwriting the methods. And we'll also talk about using the SetJoin API. So far we have not discussed it. The SetJoin API allows you to join the product catalog data with an external table or view. When Service Pack 1 of Commerce Server is released, an additional SQL object will be supported. And that's using uh, tabular functions. We will also talk about using the Bulk Update API. What if you need to access the catalog system from other languages or systems? And I will show you how you can do that. So let's see a demo of the features we just talked about. So let's go over product bundling first and uh, see how this is done with Catalog Manager. We've talked about relationships before and how you could use the for cross-sell and off-sell. And one of the other features you could use this is uh, product bundling. So basically a product bundle is a purchasable SKU that's made up of a collection of a couple of other SKUs that exist within the catalog system and it's separately priced. Um, so let's go, uh, I guess the best way to really understand this is uh, uh, to give you an example of uh, how you could uh, do bundling of uh, products. Um, let's, um, in my uh, catalog and uh, schema inventory manager, I created some uh, SKUs already here. Um, I went to the uh, product definition um, and I created a, um, a definition called computers and the computers has a description name uh, and a SKU um, and then uh, we're going to use that to create our dummy product and then this computer is going to have uh, hard drives um, and then this hard drives uh, you're also going to have uh, memory associated to this computer so basically um, you have this uh, computer that comes with memory, with hard drives, different operating systems, different types of processors uh, and they're all bundled up into one product. Okay, So that's what I've done and then in Catalog Manager um, what we can do is create a new catalog. Uh, we could have done also create a category here as well but uh, just to keep these everything separate um, I'll go ahead and create a new catalog. Uh, and then we'll call it um, we'll call it computer oops computer hardware and software. Let's choose next. Okay, so we have our uh, catalog created. Let's go to there and uh, create a new category and uh, let's just use a set of category. Let's call this um, notebooks. So inside of this category, we're going to have our uh, product, uh, and the product's going to be uh, computer. So here we're going to choose the uh, computers. I call 
call it my okay and we'll say it's about one thousand dollars finish our creating the product so this is just a dummy product that's gonna hold the uh, computers um, next what we need to do is um, uh, create some uh, other categories uh, that's gonna hold um, our hardware pieces uh, let's just call it static again um, so let's just call this accessories so in the accessories we can now create some other products and I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and create a bunch of uh, hard drives uh, monitors and memory and stuff like that and then we'll come back okay so um, created some uh, um, products here for us to use uh, so the hard drives, the processors, uh, memory, um, and um, some uh, video stuff. So if you go to the notebooks and you edit this product, you need to go to the relationship, you need to add a relationship. Um, so it needs to find products. So here I'm going to choose all of these guys okay so here's all of my products so I'll call this my uh, bundle So now we have a um, product bundle that contains um, other products inside of it. So the product is my super thin notebook and it has uh, these guys as relationships. Now when you display this on the web page um, you need to figure out um, that this product um, has uh, relationships uh, and then from that you want to look for the pro product bundle uh, relationship and then display all of that and how you would do that is for example if you go to some certain sites um, they'll show for example um, the memory um, grouped up together and notice that when we created these products uh, we created them with very specific definitions so our um, our 17 inch monitors are uh, the definition name monitors so you would actually go grab these products and uh, group them together based on a definition that would be one way another way you could do this is um, in the product description you could um, you know say for example so this is make this one one to make it easier so AMD and Intel would group together and then call this a 2 and 2 or whatever that makes sense for your here I'm grouping based on these uh, numbers that are um, similar so that's that's how that's one way of doing it but I'm sure you can come up with some um, other ways to describe this and to do this uh, much easier for you and display that on the site. 
So this is basically uh, block product bundling using relationships. Um, there is another way to do product bundling, uh, and that's a little bit um, uh, more trickier than this. So let's go take a look at how you can do that. So basically what you would do is you create a whole new category. Um, let's just call it static. So here we'll just say um, give it a $1,200 list price. So now we go ahead and add products into this. But you treat this um, category uh, as you would a product. So when you you could create, for example, um, uh, this notebooks, and instead of having the uh, my super ten notebook, let's actually disassociate this. So let's just take that, remove that, do an add. Let's get our category. Um, actually, let's not save this because I messed up. So if you go to our category properties from category association, you want to choose a child product or a child category in this case would be my notebook. And then from product association, let's remove this and save and close. So you would treat this category very differently. So now you can show um, the product which is the notebook bundle and then iterate through that because you have the uh, products within them. What's the difference between this um, and the product that we created and the relationships? Well there's one tiny issue. Now remember when we went over the catalog structure um, we said that product relationship was a table and this table only contains these columns. Um, so here uh, it has an additional column that you're not seeing, which is the product ID. If this was a category, it would have the category ID in there. Um, and of course, the item type, that's how you'd know which one is which. Now, when you display this on the site, it's going to return you this data set. For you to get additional information for the product, you're going to have to make a separate call to the back-end database uh, to say, hey, give me the product bundle or you know, the product AMD1, uh, and then retrieve additional properties for that product. Now imagine doing this for, let's say if you had 20 bundles in here, um, that would be a pretty expensive call. Now you could uh, you know, make this uh, into a search uh, where you have where the product ID equals to this or this or this or this or this and then the one call would bring you all of the properties to you. So there's two ways available uh, to you for, for you to do this. But for the category one, it's very simple. Um, what you would do is you would you know identify this notebook that hey I have um, uh, you know category bundles or product bundles but we're using them as categories so in the category then you would dis you would show this as you would a normal product instead of a category and then when people click on this um, your customers when they click on this you would go and display all of the products that are in, within uh, within it so you don't have to make an additional call uh, to find out you know what the products are. So that's that's a couple of ways of how you could uh, bundle uh, products. Um, there is one other way to do this uh, to make it a little bit more. Um, uh, there, there there are many ways to do this. I'm just trying to show you all the different ways that I've I've done it before, and hoping that one will fit your requirements. So in the um, notebook, now we did talk about that in the relationships, 
this doesn't have to be a product this could be for example um, a, um, a category so what you could do was create a category add these two bundles into it and then associate the relationship here um, so then you would you would minimize the amount of um, relationships you have but you still would have to make a call f to get the category that has these two products underneath it so you can display that to the user so those are a couple of different ways you could do product bundling and then in another um, session when I talk about uh, the marketing system and go over that I'll show you how you can actually do product bundling using uh, discounts now there are a uh, couple of other things and, and that brings up a good point about uh, the uh, pricing so the pricing for my uh, super thin computer was one thousand one thousand dollars but then if you went to the relationships and you get these products they have their own pricing and so you have to fig and you have to figure out uh, how you want to how many how you want to do this do you want to put a set price onto the bundle or do you want to have these guys grouped uh, and then have that as you know added on top of this price or just use the pricing for these bundles and not use the price that's in the uh, in the list price um, so that's pretty much it for uh, uh, product bundling before moving on to the next topic I just wanted to kind of quickly go over the um, uh, the add to cart functionality of what happens when you have uh, product bundles. So when you when the user sees this product and you show them um, um, the uh, product and all of the different uh, bundles in there, uh, what you need to do is when you say add to cart, uh, depending on your requirements, uh, you're going to have to uh, go through each relationship and add those as line items to the product. Uh, again, this depends on how you did the pricing. Um, and a bunch of other requirements that you may have. Uh, another thing, so when you when you do that, when you go to the product detail page, uh, it's going to look a little bit awkward because you'll see all these products uh, added to your cart. And what if I actually went to my other catalogs and added some other products, uh, and it wouldn't look nice? Uh, so you have to you need to have a way to group this uh, uh, and and uh, organize it in such a way so the user is not confused. Um, one way to do this is uh, to create, uh, to extend the line item object in the order system and I'll go over this uh, in another uh, uh, video session how to extend the order system and the line item you would extend it and add an additional property or actually go and create sub line items uh, that are related to the line items uh, and then have a marker on a line item that says has sub line item equals true or false so when you iterate through your basket to display line items um, you could then uh, have another table underneath this product and show all of the uh, line items that the user selected uh, as part of their bundle uh, so that's how you could do the uh, add to cart functionality now the one thing that's different is uh, pricing when you go through the pipeline components that we we talked about this earlier on um, they set certain prices for you and this price comes from the list price uh, so you have to go behind these pipeline items create your own pipeline uh, component that will go figure out the correct price um, you know for these uh, bundles uh, and then insert that uh, as part of the price and you have to initialize the correct uh, fields in the uh, in, in the uh, order the order pipeline component uh, the order form actually so that uh, they can be uh, taken advantage of in the discounting engine and such so um, that's pretty much it for this so let's go to our next topic so let's talk about um, workflow and how you can use uh, workflow within your catalog manager um, if you've noticed uh, or work with the uh, Commerce Server Marketing Manager and you go into the discounts or if you go into the advertisements, um, it has a very simple uh, workflow already created for you. And that's either you approve the, uh, the, the ad or the discount or uh, you disapprove it if it's been approved. So um, the f functionality in the scenario uh, for this is that a manager uh, as, as a normal user you would create ads and discounts but only a manager could approve them so they could go into the production system and the catalog system uh, it's probably going to be the same thing where uh, depending on depending on how your system works either you use the 
uh, cat product catalog system as a system of record, meaning that you create products in the catalog manager versus uh, it coming from an LOB system, which is your backend system. Um, and so you could modify this very similar to the uh, marketing system. All you have to do is um, go create a new uh, property definition. Uh, and in here, we'll call it, for example, um, we'll make it a, uh, a number. And we'll call it um, workflow status. And we'll keep it from um, 0 to um, about 20. I don't think you'll have more than 20 stages. Uh, and we'll make this uh, assigned to all the products because we do want to associate it to all of the products. And um, while this is being saved, now this the, there are different ways of doing the workflow. So let's just check to make sure that this actually got uh, became part of uh, a product definition. Yeah, it did. Okay. So if I was to refresh my catalog manager and then I go into this field, it should be available to me. Okay. Um, so there's different ways of doing workflow. One is very sequential, meaning that uh, one event happens after the next, after the next, and after the next. You can't skip from event one to event three. Um, you did so. This is the sequential. Actually, the pipeline components in Commerce Server is uh, in a similar concept. It's a very linear pattern, and the workflow uh, has that scenario in mind. It's it's very sequential. Uh, but then there's another uh, workflow type that can be uh, not sequential, and that's more like a, uh, event driven, meaning that I create. Um, so let's actually go over the scenario how a workflow would work and how, how you would have this in Catalog Manager and what the scenario is. The scenario would be is that you have a uh, new product is created by normal catalog users. Uh, but then once the product is created, uh, it needs to be sent to the manager for approval uh, that this product should be created and should be part of the website. So the manager approves the product uh, and then now you can go ahead and do your modification to the product, do spell check, add the category association and do everything else uh, and then you uh, push this to the website. Before the product is gone to the website, the manager has to give it a final approval. And then final approval is basically to make sure that the price is correct uh, and, and all the different uh, uh, features of the product is uh, sound. And once that's done and the manager gives his approval, the product automatically is sent to uh, the production site using staging. So um, the, this, that's more of a very sequential process. Uh, you could have uh, a more complex scenario uh, where it's not you know so sequential uh, you can cre anybody can create a product the product does not have to be uh, approved by uh, the manager uh, so you can actually add uh, some other properties to the product set its pricing do your spell check and everything else uh, and then you know the manager approves it uh, and then perhaps maybe some other things will happen to the product uh, and then uh, and they can all happen all at different times. It doesn't have to be sequential. But then once all of the uh, uh, information about the product when it's set uh, and then only then can the product be sent to the uh, production website. But anything that's between the product creation and between the time it goes to the production site and you have let's say four other sequences inside of that uh, and they can happen uh, uh, n not in a you know one two three stage, meaning that it can happen. Any one of those sequences can happen at any time. Um, we're going to concentrate more on the uh, the basic uh, workflow, the sequential workflow that uh, I talked about. Um, so the way you would uh, identify is so we created this product, um, and then it would go through uh, you know a, a stage one, meaning that the product. Um, is now um, it needs to be approved by the manager. So the manager would log in 
um, and would come in to, uh, to see the products that are ready for his approval um, and of course you can do this through that um, uh, we said that we had these um, categories uh, that were uh, dynamic in nature uh, and that being having a CY list price of uh, greater than one. So you could create a, a, a category um, in here in the books category. Let's actually do that right now. So we'll create a dynamic category. So here um, we said we call our definition. Let's choose uh, built-in column here. So for all of them that are not, so let's actually we call it um, workflow status. Okay. Actually, we say it was a number, so here you go. Um, and then what you would do is you would modify the um, catalog manager code that when the user clicked on this, you would identify that this is a dynamic uh, the dynamic category and uh, bring back the results of all the products that has stage equals to one. Um, so. We now have our uh, and make sure that you know these categories are not just for one catalog but for um, all the catalogs. So now that this is stage one, uh, no matter uh, how many, you can also put a button here you're saying save to web, meaning that uh, push this to production environment. No matter how many times the user tries to uh, click save to web, it won't go anywhere because uh, its stage is to is set to one. It has to go to stage two, meaning that it's approved by a manager. So a manager will log in, see the approval process, uh, the approved products, uh, and put this to uh, stage two, meaning that he has approved it, um, and then the business user comes and looks and says oh my product has been approved um, and then they can come in and take a look at uh, uh, you know do other modifications set the category association if there's any relationships uh, set the correct pricing do the spell check and everything else for this um, and then when it's uh, set and ready to go now it's on stage three meaning that I'm gonna push this to the website and, all, and, and if you have a button here that says save to web, uh, it would only save to web if the status was to equal to two, uh, it would, then it would uh, make the status to, to three, uh, and then save and close. So then you can have another category here that says um, uh, ready for production, or something like that as a category. And again, it has the same dynamic uh, a query that says all the products that are ready to be pushed to production, uh, we're having the value of three. So then you could, um, the manager could then look at this uh, and say, okay, now I've, I'm going to push this, I'm going to approve this. And when the manager approves this, it'll be status set to four. And then the product is ready to be sent to production and it will no longer appear in one of these uh, dynamic stuff here. So then how is it the product, uh, uh, how, how would uh, the staging would know? Uh, notice that we did have uh, earlier when uh, we talked about the uh, staging environment in the catalog system, um, we had these expressional uh, staging that we could do. And that expressional staging could then say um, where only stage data, I believe it was this last one, if you go to property from the catalog. Um, so catalog options and it's set for full so you would actually do this transactional and then say where um, work flow status 
equals to four. So then the staging would you know run in a, a schedule uh, and would pick up if that was uh, it equals to four. Now of course in your UI you would have to have you know but much nicer buttons instead of going in here and modifying these things. Um, so what you could do is when the user clicked on the uh, requires approval, you would show all the products here. The user can just right click on the product and say the manager could right click and say approve, uh, and then you would automatically set the uh, uh, values underneath the uh, UI. So that would be very simple, um, a simple workflow. Now, how do you actually uh, integrate this uh, to the workflow uh, in Windows or the, the .NET Framework uh, 3.0? So let's talk about how you can do that now. So here's a quick uh, sample uh, that comes with the uh, uh, workflow foundation and I just modified a little bit so that it would uh, uh, integrate the uh, product approval process. So this is a uh, sequential uh, product just like we were talking about before. A uh, product is submitted from a user uh, then a manager will uh, perform uh, a request for approval uh, and then the product is reviewed uh, and then either it's approved or rejected uh, which will uh, end our scenario. Now there comes a time where a product is submitted and a manager has not reviewed it for a certain period of time. Uh, for this sample I put a delay uh, of five seconds so when the five second time runs out yeah, it's automatically rejected and the workflow comes to an end. So here we have a, uh, the workflows uh, I created. A pro there's a project already created with the uh, workflows. Uh, then the product services where the bulk of the uh, work happens behind uh, this uh, workflow. Uh, and then a product host uh, which is a simple console application uh, that sits and uh, listens for uh, uh, TCP calls and then will interact with the product services which in turn will call our workflow. And then there's two applications, the product catalog application and the product catalog manager application. These are very uh, simple uh, applications. Now if you open up the uh, product catalog application, this is something you would incorporate into catalog manager. And then for the product catalog manager application, this is the manager's view and tasks that are available uh, to a manager. So in here you uh, a user would select a product uh, would submit it for approval uh, and then from a manager's perspective uh, they would see the product and what status it is so they can take an action either approve it or disapprove it so actually let's see how this uh, works so we'll launch our uh, product host so it's just there now it listens and we'll launch our uh, catalog application and our manager application So here I've uh, hardwired this button to a form uh, which makes a call to our C-Sharp site. Uh, it does a quick search and returns all of the uh, products uh, that are available uh, for me. So here I'm going to select uh, the first product and submit it. So once the product is submitted, notice this in review. I will approve it. Here it was submitted, and then once it goes into workflow, it's uh, marked as a, uh, in in review. And then once uh, the manager approves it, uh, then you can see the status of it being uh, approved. So if you look at the timeout scenario, where I will select the product, I would submit it. So it's submitted. It goes through the workflow, becomes in review. After five seconds it's automatically rejected because I didn't take any action on it. So that's how you can quickly integrate with the uh, workflow. This sample is included uh, within the uh, uh, video training so you can play around some more with this. So let's uh, go into our next topic. So here's the uh, catalog web service for our C Sharp site. I've uh, went ahead and extended it so let's go talk about a little bit of uh, what I did. So the very first thing I did was I made a backup of my catalog web service then I added a new catalog web service uh, ASMX file in here 
which created the uh, catalog web service uh, .cs, the code behind uh, for it over here. So if we were to look at this uh, code behind, um, notice that the, uh, uh, the using statement is pretty sim similar to uh, a normal uh, uh, a web service page that would be added. Uh, ex with addition that I added this uh, catalog uh, using the Microsoft.com server that catalog that XML data. Uh, and I'll go into that a little bit to why we put that in there. Um, the next thing I did was um, I have my catalog web service class in here. Uh, and then I'm inheriting the catalog web service uh, from Commerce Server. Um, and then I have my uh, constructor, uh, and then I call the base constructor. And then I have a web method, which is an overwrite of the save product of the catalog web service uh, with its parameters. Uh, you could perform some action here, uh, and then call the save method, uh, and then return the product object uh, back or do some more action afterwards. It's pretty important to have this uh, web service name exactly as is. Uh, HTTP uh, colon forward slash forward slash schema dot Microsoft dot com uh, forward slash commerce server forward slash 2006 forward slash 06 forward slash catalog web service. So why did I need this uh, namespace here? Well, when you overwrite the uh, product catalog objects, um, you pass back either categories or products and and, uh, and other uh, uh, objects back to the catalog web server to, to the catalog manager. Uh, to do that, you need to have these namespaces. So what I did was I just added another additional um, reference. So by default, you'll get the Microsoft the catalog server, which is the uh, the web service itself. I have added the Microsoft.commerceserver.catalog.dll as a reference because the object types exist in this namespace. Um, so this product catalog or this product object is returning back the XML data that product. So if I was to call the base product, if we were to go to look at the uh, definitions for this, and notice that it's returning a uh, product object but from the namespace XML data. So you could overwrite any of the methods in the uh, catalog web service uh, as long as you conform to the signature uh, and you should be fine. So let's take a quick look at um, how this how this is going to work. So open up catalog manager Okay, so we're connected to our C Sharp site. Make sure that we're actually hitting the right web service. And we are going localhost C Sharp catalog web service. And notice that we are hitting uh, our localhost C Sharp web service. So let's just do a uh, quick test. And notice that our test is successful, and we can call this method and save our product uh, object without any issues. So let's go into how to uh, use the set join API. So here we have uh, a table, uh, actually two tables that I created plus a view uh, to show you how the uh, set join API would work. Um, the first table uh, is basically has a product ID, an image name. Uh, and then an ID, and then that ID ties it into our second table, uh, which has an image type. Um, and then if you look at our view, it joins uh, both of these tables, um, and if you execute these, um, it will return you uh, some uh, uh, images for a specific product. Uh, here I just have the two records, uh, and that's what we're going to be uh, working with. So a scenario for using the join table is to have a product. Uh, here I've chosen the Venus product uh, that has images associated with it. Uh, on my blog, I show you how to use uh, multiple images with a product catalog system. Uh, but one of the scenarios uh, 
uh, the easy scenario is uh, to use the joint uh, joint table, uh, but it's it has some limitation, uh, and so uh, to to overcome that, I show you how to do that in my blog, uh, which you have some you know very complex scenarios, and you can accomplish it there. Um, so let's take a look at how um, we can use the setjoin API. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a button um, and. I have the code in there, uh, but before doing that, let's actually go to the web config, uh, and I'll show you the uh, parameters that you need to put in order for the runtime site uh, to work correctly. So if we go into our uh, inetpub dev dev root, our C sharp site, and if we open up the uh, web config, uh, we'll see uh, that under the uh, uh, catalog section. Um, there should be a um, join table information okay so here we go um, so there's the uh, catalog node you would have to uh, undermark this in order for it to uh, to work uh, let's go ahead and uh, take care of that right now So here by default you have some uh, cache values uh, and then also here you have the uh, join table and then your uh, catalog sets and how they should be associated. Uh, in the join table uh, you can uh, give it the uh, uh, table name. It's actually more like a, the uh, object name rather than table name because you can join either with a table or a view. Uh, and then you want to give it the join key and then the source uh, join key and then what type of a join do you want? Do you want an inner join, left join, uh, right join or an outer join? So um, since uh, we've already said that um, we're going to join to um, our first table which is the um, Actually, it's uh, join table A, uh, so we'll go ahead and set that to uh, join table A. And our uh, we're targeting the uh, product ID. and it's going to be an inner join because we want all the records uh, that exist uh, uh, between the two tables that are equal. Um, so this is how you would do it on your site and uh, when you create, an, create, when you make a product call uh, the join happens uh, automatically for you and the data is returned in a data set. But let's take a look at how you do this uh, programmatically. So I'll go ahead and put some code, I'll pause the video and then come back and show you how to do this. Okay, so I set the uh, information there. Uh, let's go take a look at how this is set. Uh, so I'm just creating a new method called uh, uh, create join table, pass the uh, context and then if you go to the UTEL page um, we have, uh, first thing we do is we create a join table information and this join, into, uh, join table information you give it the uh, a SQL object uh, the type of join you want to do very similar to the web config we saw uh, and then what type of a join you want to do and then once you pass that to set join table uh, with the info uh, every call you make after that is going to have this uh, association uh, made with the other table um, so then I call our get product uh, uh, method which we created up uh, earlier uh, and pass it the parameters of the AdventureWorks catalog uh, our product in the current context and then we'll see some uh, data coming back so let's just execute this so I'm going to set my uh, site to uh, C sharp site I'm going to create an agent and I'm going to call our okay so it looks like we have oh I um, can give it the bad site name so let's just continue uh, 
Let's fix this. See sharp sight. So now let's create the context. Okay, and now let's call our API. So uh, we pass it all information, and we call the uh, good product. So now we've got a uh, product object. Let's take a look at what the um, Let's take a look at the join information table. Okay, here it is. Okay, so that brought us uh, two records. Uh, notice that in the catalog manager, there's only one record, and it has uh, this product uh, has no variance. Okay. So if we go back to the right hand side, we'll notice that we have now our um, uh, product ID uh, that's being returned by the table, uh, the image name, um, and the image ID. And so that's how you use the uh, join table. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, our next section. Um, so for the next section, uh, let's take a look at how we can use uh, SharePoint uh, and, and uh, Commerce Server together. There's, uh, uh, I mentioned earlier in the presentation that uh, we're going to go over talk about content management. So you've looked at the, um, uh, the, the, some of the features that we have implemented so far and that's actually to create the uh, service catalogs and then the service catalog you can actually do uh, some uh, you know, some HTML inside of the product uh, and uh, that would give you uh, some kind of a uh, management on the content but what if you wanted to have the content management uh, within the product now some customers that I've worked with um, we've had these uh, custom HTML description actually within the product so if you were to go to AdventureWorks catalog, um, we had a custom property uh, that had some uh, uh, HTML, and then we used that HTML for the description of the uh, product, um, and then we uh, had a template page, an ASPX page, that displayed various uh, properties uh, on that ASPX page, uh, plus these uh, HTML uh, that had uh, that was inside of that. Uh, one way you can actually merge all of this into one is to uh, when you do an HTML uh, you would have some uh, hidden text uh, in here or I should say some hidden uh, comments and then within those comments you can uh, find and replace uh, these certain values within the uh, property of the product into the HTML and then render that. The problem this way is that um, you have to do it through the runtime. Uh, now you can uh, have a batch sitting on the back end uh, and looking at this content and go uh, pre-render this uh, into an HTML form and then s serve it to the uh, to the website. Um, so you could solve that problem uh, one way. Uh, there are other issues depending on your requirements and how you want to do this. Uh, you have to figure out um, for example what if uh, during the runtime you wanted to figure out um, which content go where uh, and perform some logic on it based on that. So then if that's the case then you can't uh, you know, from uh, do it at the back end through a bat job because it has to figure that uh, at the time of the execution. For example, let's say you had uh, some uh, pricing rules that you want to implement and it had to be only during the execution or the rendering of the page. Uh, so um, that wouldn't be uh, something that you would want to do at the back end because it's already pre-rendered for you and then you would serve those cache pages. So this would actually take a perf hit if you were to go through the HTML and then f do find and replace within the text and everything else and then render this. So another way to do this is to actually use uh, SharePoint uh, which gives you a much more flexibility uh, in how the product is displayed within uh, within the SharePoint uh, site. So 
uh, the starter site comes with um, if you go into uh, the starter site here it has some uh, uh, components um, these this uh, commerce components that DLL uh, and the source code is available and you'll see that there are some uh, commerce controls uh, pre-created for you uh, and if you use those um, you can drag and drop them on your page and they'll have for example a product detail page or something other there is a uh, white paper uh, on Microsoft's website that shows how to integrate the commerce server uh, and uh, SharePoint together uh, and integrate that and basically what you do is you install SharePoint on your machine uh, and then uh, you would have a commerce server uh, a website and what you do is you basically look at the web config file between the SharePoint and commerce server and merge those two in and now you have a SharePoint site with all the commerce server modules preloaded uh, so that you can make calls to the commerce APIs and render those now these uh, the source code for the uh, commerce components at DLL like I said is available to you so you are, and these are actually com um, web controls and so what you do is you change the inheritance uh, from the web control uh, to web parts uh, and then uh, you deploy the web part to your SharePoint site um, and then you can have the uh, content management uh, of uh, SharePoint with commerce server uh, features in there there are some sample codes uh, in the um, in, in the white paper as well uh, that shows you uh, the, this integration and how to uh, use the commerce APIs there are some simple samples in there but uh, it should give you some ideas how you can go and extend it to make it beyond uh, what it is so here I've created a web part uh, that goes to a specific site uh, and it gets all of the uh, catalogs and then it displays all of the categories for that ca for that catalog so how did I create this uh, web part and how to add it in SharePoint so first thing what I did was I went to the SharePoint administrator um, and then in the administrator I went to uh, the application management and then from there I created a new uh, SharePoint site now this is the Windows SharePoint 3.0 um, there are some differences between uh, the SharePoint 3.0 as well as MOS. Uh, there's additional features and functionality uh, in MOS, so you'll have to figure out which uh, suits uh, better your needs uh, or your, in your company's needs, and then you can decide whether you want the SharePoint 3.0 or if you want MOS. So once I created a uh, new application, I could then see it in my IS Manager. Um, so the next thing is to go to the um, uh, to Visual Studio and create yourself a uh, uh, web um, uh, project, uh, a web part project. Now I installed the uh, SharePoint extensions for Visual Studio, uh, so when you go in to create a new project, the um, SharePoint node will be available, and then from there you can actually create uh, different uh, projects so here I went to SharePoint and then from that I selected the web part this gives you a basic template and that template basically has um, what you see here uh, in a render method with uh, some comments uh, in there so most of the work is going to go to the uh, render uh, method uh, what I did also is that I added the uh, catalog uh, runtime reference as well as the uh, commerce server runtime um, and then uh, in the uh, commerce catalog web part in the render method um, it passes a writer uh, so from that writer basically I'm outputting a text um, and then I'm getting the commerce context site name uh, from the commerce context uh, and then from that I will go and get all the catalogs and then iterate through the catalog uh, data set and then uh, display the catalog name here so I get a catalog row and then from that I get the uh, column name and I display that and then I iterate from that and I get the catalog and then get all the categories and display that uh, in the following line actually let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see the real state so here we go um, so it's pretty simple code nothing really uh, too complex 
Um, and then once I'm done with this, um, well, there's one more uh, additional piece here. Um, if you go to the assembly info, um, I added the uh, allow partially trust caller. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, when I was uh, trying to uh, register this with SharePoint, it complained that I didn't have this attribute uh, enabled. So I added that in there. So there's one additional um, uh, references I made here was the uh, system.security so I can get the allow uh, partially trusted caller. So um, then I compiled uh, this uh, and then if you go to the bin directory um, I, I, you see uh, a bunch of DLLs created here. You probably only need the commerce uh, web.dll, uh, and so what I did then was I went and found out where the uh, SharePoint directory is by going to the home directory. And once you found it, um, you navigate to that directory. In my case, it was um, the SharePoint uh, virtual directory is 89, which is the port, uh, and then here's my web config. So they made some changes to the web config. So let's go over the changes that I did to make this work. Um, so SharePoint has its own section configuration uh, and what I did was I went and took the uh, Commerce Server section config uh, and added that in there and here and there's, there's two of them. Uh, the application and then the catalog. So the application is the uh, uh, configuration uh, handler uh, and this is the uh, catalog configuration handler and we'll go over those and what it does is it just reads some sections within the, uh, the the web config to read some of the values in there. So the application um, well first is the uh, section group commerce server so it goes into the uh, commerce server group element here Then from that it's going to read the application element which is here and in that it's going to read our site name um, and some debug level on how it's supposed to uh, instantiate its object uh, and then in here we have the uh, catalog uh, section so um, I've got the uh, catalog here remarked out but uh, you can add, you can enable some of these values here if you wanted to um, and then in, under the module section if we go further down or actually I passed it So here we go. Uh, and then under the module section, I, I needed to add the commerce application. So that section handler that you saw earlier for commerce application, this is the runtime um, commerce application. When this loads, it's going to read the site name. And then the module, the commerce catalog module, uh, will, is dependent upon the commerce application. And the reason for that is because it needs to know the site name in order to go get the connection string so it can instantiate the correct module. Um, and so those two DLLs need to be added here. Then once I, um, so once you uh, compile your uh, assemblies in, in, the, in the web part, uh, copy those into the uh, bin directory of uh, your SharePoint site. And I did that for my site here. Next what you need to do is you need to go to the web config again and you need to allow the um, control uh, to be uh, to be safe and to be able to execute. So there is this the safe control section. In here basically what I did was I copied one of the elements that was already there uh, and then I modified its uh, uh, assembly being uh, commerce uh, control catalog web part uh, and then its namespace uh, and then the type star and uh, the rest is just default uh, from above. And so how do I get these things? Uh, well basically what you do is um, I use a little tool here, uh, Reflector. Uh, and then from that, once you launch the tool, you navigate to your uh, assembly. And here I have mine already loaded. Uh, and then what you do here is then you want to copy this um, name, which is the strong name type name, the four part. Uh, and then you copy that and you paste that into your um, uh, assembly name here. The namespace is basically um, the namespace we have up here for our site. Uh, this By putting this namespace, anything, uh, all the classes below it is also safe. 
So once I made the web config changes, there's one additional uh, additional change you need to make to the web config. Commerce server, if you're installing the other modules, like for example profiles and uh, orders and such, it needs to run in full trust. So you need to modify the web config setting uh, to run this in, um, in full trust. So we need to find the trust level attribute here. And here it is. And this is, you, this I said this to full. Uh, by default, this is going to come to be, um, I believe, it is either minimal or the uh, medium trust. So once you uh, modified that to the uh, full trust, um, and also if you have the um, partially trusted, then you can then register your um, component. So what you do is um, you go into your site. Um, under the site uh, settings and then from here and, and once what happens is now that once you copy the DLL and you went to the web config and you added the uh, safe uh, control list up here uh, then the site uh, and then if you go to uh, galleries and then web parts In this page, uh, once it shows up, it's going to go basically read the web config file and show you all of the controls that are available to you. And then you'll check that uh, control and you'll upload it to the gallery. So, you see, I already have mine up here, but you, when you click the new button, Um, you should then see your uh, commerce web port and then I click populate gallery. Uh, I'm not going to do this because um, I've already done it. So let's go back to, um, so then you can have that in here. You can edit this, um, it's not necessary but um, you can have additional properties set uh, for this. So you can have a title for it um, and this, you can call it something more meaningful. So then going back to the uh, home page uh, and what you can do is you can go to the uh, edit section and you can, um, so I have this, uh, then you can click on add web part and then you can see your uh, commerce catalog uh, in here. So you can add that uh, web part and now you got two of them. So I'm going to go ahead and delete um, this one. So now you have a uh, web part that displays and interacts with Commerce Server. So how do you update multiple items um, with one API? Commerce Server has a uh, uh, API that's a uh, bulk update and allows you to update multiple uh, products uh, or variants at the same time. So if you take a look at uh, the Adventure Wars catalog in our uh, C Sharp site, um, here we have the crampon and there's three products in here uh, and their uh, price range is uh, 114, 150, 154. So we're going to go ahead and do a bulk update on all the prices. Um, back into our Catalog System Bench API. Uh, we have a, uh, I uh, put an additional uh, button here and that uh, will do a bulk update. So if we go to the definition of this, um, we have, uh, we first thing we do is we get a catalog. So we're going to go get the Adventure Wars catalog. Uh, from that, uh, we're going to do a, from the context, we get a search object, uh, pass it the uh, catalog name and a where clause. And we're saying that if, if the definition is equal to crampon, then return that to the search. And then we get a uh, data set back for the catalog items data set. Then we iterate through uh, one by one uh, through our search results, and we get this rest price, and we update it with $5. 
and then we pass the catalog uh, the data set uh, back to the uh, API update items uh, and we update multiple items in one API so let's take a look at how that's gonna work so here just uh, notice that the prices are 114, 150, 154 let's connect to our uh, C sharp site so we connected let's call our bulk API okay the bulk API is done so let's go ahead and refresh this and notice that the prices are changed and uh, by increment of five dollars so that's how you do uh, bulk updates to your product catalog and you can make the where clause uh, much more complex than the one I have here so in our last section we're going to talk about how to uh, access the uh, product catalog from other systems uh, that are not .NET and they don't run on Windows, uh, Linux or some other uh, system that you have uh, and you have to keep it running and how you do that. Well none of the .NET APIs are supported outside of the Windows environment uh, so the way to access this is through the web services. Um, so one easy way to do this is uh, to inherit, like we did earlier and I showed you, uh, to inherit the catalog web service uh, and then override the uh, methods uh, so you could actually, uh, instead of passing the product catalog object, uh, you would then return a, um, an XML format uh, so that the uh, other system would understand. So you'd pass a, a string object uh, and then uh, the product catalog you would send the data set and uh, strip out the uh, pieces that you didn't need. So that would be one, one way. Another way is to keep it as is, make the call to the uh, uh, get uh, product or catalog or whatever um, that you need and then uh, get the XML as you have it from the web service and then parse that and then from that uh, you could uh, read, uh, read the data. Um, so another way is also is that well that's retrieving data from commerce server what if I was sending data to commerce server from other systems uh, that were uh, on, not running on Windows OS and stuff well the same method applies um, you would create an XML file you would pass it you would override uh, the methods uh, you would parse the XML and translate it into a, a catalog object and then you would do your update or you save or create a new uh, object in the product catalog system uh, or you could keep it as is uh, and then you would actually create a SOAP envelope uh, and you would uh, pass the data into it and submit it. So in this example what we're going to do is we're going to quickly take a look at uh, you know how to do uh, retrieve let's say uh, catalogs from the catalog system uh, and, and how to actually read that data. Uh, since I don't have uh, PHP or some other uh, you know Java or anything like that on my system, uh, I'm gonna the the sample is gonna basically show you uh, how to do this, and I'm gonna use JavaScript uh, to uh, interact with the uh, catalog system. So I've created my JavaScript here, uh, and let's go over it to, to what it does. So I have a URL where I'm gonna make a call. Uh, then we have a uh, SOAP action. Uh, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, and then what we do is uh, we have an XML that we need to send it to the web service uh, in order for it to uh, work. So basically we send generate SOAP message. Uh, in here we can accept a search uh, parameter or a language. Uh, so here I'm passing it as a search uh, one equals to one and being uh, en dash us. Uh, you could actually remark these out if you wanted to. Um, and it still would work but if you're gonna do specific searches within your catalog uh, then you probably want to keep that in there so once you call this it's gonna generate this uh, uh, soap envelope and then you return that back to the caller uh, so that text goes in here um, so the next thing uh, the, the XML goes here so the next thing is that we call this uh, uh, web service uh, method and here we passing it the URL, the XML SOAP envelope, and the uh, uh, SOAP action. So here I created a uh, Microsoft uh, XML HTTP object. Uh, from that, I uh, I'm using the open method, I'm going to do a post uh, to this URL, which is over here. Um, and then, uh, is it an async versus not? I set it to false. 
uh, here if you're going across domains and you probably want to set the uh, username and uh, password uh, for my system happen to be I'm going to diminish it and pass at word one uh, and then there's two headers that I set for this so the first one is the soap action and in soap action I pass it this uh, very long uh, uh, parameter here which basically says you know get catalogs uh, and then for the content type I want to send text XML because that's what we are posting uh, and then we send our XML and we get a response back you could make this response XML so you can deal with it here I'm returning back uh, the text value and I'm just displaying that over here so let's actually execute this and see what we get back so here the message box is a uh, you know a str XML string that's coming back um, so if you ignore everything up here, notice that this starts off with a catalog name of uh, AdventureWorks Catalog, uh, and then there's some additional uh, properties that are available for it. Uh, is it a virtual catalog with the variant code, the product ID, and if you go further down, there's a display name of the AdventureWorks and such. Uh, and then if you continue going down, oh, so it ends over here, uh, and then it should start with the next uh, catalog, which uh, uh, here it's the computer and hardware so this is what you get back so now let's see how we got this uh, uh, how we got all of these uh, XML stuff uh, basically what I did was I uh, modified uh, how the uh, catalog uh, commerce server catalog manager would uh, interact with the um, web service so if you go to the uh, connections um, here I'm just passing it a uh, it's the same thing I just named it differently and the reason for that is that there is an XML file that the product catalog object use, the, the catalog manager uses in order to interact with the web service and that's located under your document settings under your profile under the um, application data Microsoft and Microsoft catalog manager so if you were to open this up in uh, IE we'll go further down to where I made the setting so here's the uh, settings for uh, my site I'm telling it to uh, use the proxy server for the name and I'm send setting the port 888 um, and the reason for that is that um, I'm gonna capture all of those settings using the uh, Fiddler tool so if you go to the Fiddler option uh, we're saying allow remote clients to connect and the listening port is set for 888 so whenever I open a catalog manager or I make uh, any kind of a, a call to the catalog manager um, all the calls are tracked uh, through, a, through the uh, uh, Fiddler tool so the reason I did that is that um, I am looking for my get catalog method being executed so here um, if you look at it here's all of the headers that are being sent to the server and here's all the XML that's going uh, and so if the, the it's, a, it's a post and the post is made to our ASMX uh, page uh, using HTTP 1.1 uh, uh, has a user agent and such but the only interesting part here is the content type uh, and as well as the, um, the SOAP action so this URL that we got for our SOAP action uh, is this over here and as far as this XML, is con this, this uh, uh, ASMX file is concerned that came from uh, this over here so that was the uh, name of the server uh, HTTP, uh, name of the server, the virtual directory and then the actual ASMX file so here's the XML envelope that's being passed to the web service so I did basically I copied this uh, and I pasted it here and I'm modifying the uh, parameters here that are being sent to it so um, the result back you get is this XML file the stuff that we got back in our uh, uh, text uh, the message box so then you can look at this XML and uh, write a uh, 
uh, query to iterate through this uh, to get only the display name of the catalogs for you. So that's one way of accessing the uh, uh, catalog system through web services. Now, you, nothing's stopping you from creating your own web service to make and make this a little bit easier instead of all of this. Uh, uh, other attributes and elements uh, that are inside of the uh, XML coming back. So you could create your own XML, uh, you, you can create your own catalog web service uh, and then that, that sends back cleaner XML. So this concludes uh, this portion of the advanced uh, catalog uh, system.